I have another question is that, uh, as you know, that Hinduism is uh, very diverse and in some sense, it gets a sense of pride, but also in another sense, it's quite confusing. You have so many darshans trying to study the idea of man, you know, soul, nature and God and, and then you have one which says, you know, logic and then you have one saying many atoms, one thing, only two realities, one thing, because it's one reality, then you have Vishuddha, which is five realities, Jeev, Ishwar, Maya, Brahm, Parabrahm. So the question is, when you have all this big gauntlet of ideas, does it really help you in any way? Because where do you sit? I mean, for you it's okay, you already kind of have some leanings with other way. But surely there's a huge amount of ideas in Hinduism. How, how do you go about tackling all this and how do you kind of progress? For the audience, especially the people who are watching on TV, let me just tidy up the word darshan, what it means and what is the significance in Hindu tradition. What is this word darshan we hear? So many six darshan they talk of shut what is, what is darshan first of all darshan is if you like a philosophic explanation regarding the nature of reality so there are six schools of philosophy in the in the, in the hindu tradition six schools shut darshan six so these are very ancient the most ancient from my knowledge uh, is the nyaya philosophy the nyaya philosophy just focus on logic as vijaya just mentioned and how do you decide something is for real? They say it must be pratyaksh, means be straight away, or anuman, means you are kind of just inference. This is how they actually thought about the universe. They were very clear, thing, very deep thinkers. So just using, if you like, mental gymnastics, they were trying to come to terms regarding the nature of reality. And the most ancient is the Nyaya philosophy, purely logic. And you, f you find it in endearing, but it's really not suited to the modern time. Because if you look through the whole process, it may appear outdated and perhaps doesn't relate to human humanity today. So it's fallen by the wayside. The second philosophy we had was the Vaisheshika philosophy. It talks of the atom and the void, that everything is made of atom and the void. So this idea of Democritus and what the Greek philosophy, it comes straight out of the Vaisheshika darshan, the second philosophy. The third philosophy we, we had is called the Purvamimasa. Now the Purvamimasa is a very interesting philosophy. It said really, it didn't believe in God even. Can you believe that? This is Hinduism. It says the only thing we can teach you is there are certain rituals you can do. There are certain slokas and mantras that you can pronounce in a specific manner. So if you do the liturgy, means the rituals, proper pronunciation, proper yagna, proper you know altar created with the perfect measurement, and you must make sure you pay the right Brahmin to do the right pronunciation, that will be counterproductive. This is called the Purvamimasa. I mean, just do this liturgy and certain results will follow. So you'll get bad benefit. In fact, there are some people who are selling stuff like that on TV at the moment. So they say you do certain liturgy and certain benefits will follow, we guarantee them. And you must pay us otherwise because we know the right pronunciation. Otherwise, you employ the next door neighbor, you are in trouble. Counterproductive, it will be like a course. Your family will be destroyed. So poor guy, don't do any liturgy unless you pay me. If this was going on, poor Vamimasa. That has fallen by the wayside as well. That's outdated. Still some remnants, you know, you find in some groups that are still trying to promote it and teach you that if you repeat this loco perfectly, certain results will follow. Whether it's true or not, this is again a philosophy that fell by the wayside. There was no God in this philosophy. Imagine, no God even. Just do the liturgy, you get results. Good life, health, everything, you sort of money, everything. The girl you want to marry, no problem. They sort you out. This is what it was, Purumimasa. That's fallen by the wayside. Then we come to the three philosophies that have stood the test of time and formed the foundation of modern Hinduism. These three have been lost. They are perhaps 5,000 years old and that old. And they've fallen by the wayside. The three that are now modern philosophy of Hinduism and forms the foundation of modern Hinduism are, it starts with the Sankhya Darshan of Kapil. It talks about distinguishing the spirit from the body. If you like, <coughs> matter and spirit are different. This is exactly what I just talked about in the first question. The underpinning to this reality is the spirit. It manifests as the universe, but the underpinning is spirit. And that distinction was actually experienced by this ancient Rishi called Kapil. And he produced the first truly spiritual philosophy of the Hindus, the Sankhya Darshan. It's the foundation of Hinduism. Every Hindu must bow down to Kapil. I, I give him the highest smile. I'm in love with his personality. First human being to see himself as the spirit, as Atman and not the body and the mind. First one to actually experience. So this is the foundation of modern Hinduism. See, Nyaya, Vaisheshika, Purumimasa, outdated. Then comes Sankhya. Now Sankhya was okay, but still difficult to kind of, because there was no goal in Sankhya. 
So difficult for general man on the street to appreciate. So then came Patanjali and he brought in from the Sankhya Darshan got the Yoga Darshan. So he added one category that Akpila not put the category is God. You need God. Human beings are okay, but God. So Atman is okay, but there must be something superior Atma. Atman of Atman, highest. So he brought in Paramatma, the idea of and you know as a God. So this is the if you like the transition from Sankhya to the Yoga Darshan. And then we have the modern proponents of Vedanta Darshan. So if you like, these are the six schools of philosophy. Sankhya, Yoga, Vedanta. And all of us here are really, you know, uh, subscribing to the Vedanta philosophy. And there's a variation in the Vedanta philosophy. There are three, uh, three dimensions to Vedanta. There's a Dvaita Vedanta which says you and God are different. Don't you dare even make any such comment. You could anything. You are completely different. You are moron. Don't equate yourself to God. Very severe guys. And then there's a Vishishta Dvaita which says you are the spark of divine. Don't worry my boy. He is like fire. You are like a spark. And then you could Dvaita saying oh this distinction between a spark and a fire. What distinction? Fire is fire. So size doesn't matter. That's what he's saying. So you are basically the spark of divine. You are that, my boy. This is Advaita. Philosophically, Advaita is a, is a solid, most solid, because it gives answer to this kind of philosophic challenges from science and rationality. But Vishish Advaita is perhaps the more practical one, because you adopt this attitude that I am not God, I am a spark of God. There's a big difference. So it keeps you under control, basically. You can't become arrogant. So this is the difference between Vishisht and Advaita philosophy. This is, if you like, the six darshanas of the Hindus. It's nice to explore this on, on television. You give me an opportunity to say that without saying too much about what you... <laughs> now, this, the second part of the question which I ask is, okay, you've given me all the six darshana, marvelous, but all you've done is you increased our confusion. So what should we follow now? Should we go for the Purumimasa and do this mantra properly pronounced by the proper Brahmins? What should we do next? So the answer is this, again, from Vivekananda. You follow what appeals to you, what fits your digestion. Suppose you take a bit of Vaishishta, you take a bit of Advaita, you take, say, and it may be a weird mixture, but whatever aspects of your religion appeal to you, adopt it and make it your own and go to its conclusion. Don't just believe in it, take it to its conclusion. So choose the prescription, if you like, choose the menu that suits your own digestion system and then swallow it, eat it and become strong. Take it to his conclusion. So the answer is, it is, of course, when you give a big menu, you create confusion. Like you go to a restaurant and you know, you get the French menu and you don't know what it's they're talking about. It creates confusion. So you go to confusion. But he's simply saying, read the menu carefully, translate if necessary. The part that kind of agree with your digestion system that you like, adopt it and make it your own and eat the material, digest the material and let it take you to his conclusion. 